worked out with uh, some part of that management just lots of volunteers and you know great opportunity to see the museum's biggest permanent signature in the UPGA it is now held in downtown all the time so um, lots of food trucks and vendors and music and We'll also still have the exhibition here in uh, the Swan Atrium uh, of altars uh, as we've done in past years. And also uh, Noche, Noche de Museo. Yeah. Okay, uh, on, on the actual day of the day, on November 2nd, all of these things we have here. Collections, um, we are taking a little bit of a break from new donations. Come in so you may see some next month, but uh, just, just given the fact that we are one short staff member and two, a uh, good portion of what was our uh, sort of storage and staging area is currently under construction. Um, so we are uh, taking a bit of a break from, from the construction. Hopefully by November we'll be back. Art in public places. Uh, the report has the photos of the uh, shop art boxes that were selected. You can see those getting painted. That's right now, uh, development of our talked about the capital campaign. We've had really great marketing coverage, um, both the agriculture exhibit and the PBS News Hour. I think you that out. But all of you um, had a lot of great coverage around the capital. And then uh, the last thing I'll just mention is that uh, we have a great volunteer appreciation event, um, distributing the produce baskets from Poland Farms and the flowers from Era So uh, that's I think the fourth year we've done that particular format of our volunteer appreciation. And as we get back to right away, uh, thank our volunteers. Uh, thank you all. Service on board, and if uh, most of you had a chance to come by and pick up your fantastic produce that day. Any questions on the director? Thank you for that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I, uh, I got this, and I spent five and a half years on the Transportation Advisory Board. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, this basket is so lovely. It's such a lovely thing to have. Mm -hmm. My daughter made something out of uh, eggplants and, and she got the thing with the potatoes and, and made it for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, she just, she adores it. And I eat the tomatoes right on the edges. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a question. The exhibit is so gorgeous, the agriculture top is so gorgeous. And um, the thing with the spoons, what are you going to do? What is, what's going to happen to that? That is so magnificent. The table and the dough and, and the pottery that was done here is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was like really taken back. Okay. Well, and I'm wondering what are you going to do? What are you going to do with that? Where is it going to go? So, part of our contract with the artist Margarita Carrera, who coordinated all of that, is that at the conclusion, then she gets all of that artwork. So we're actually going to um, pack it up and actually take it down in a truck to Houston, Texas. Um, so oh my gosh. Um, we're going to. Drive down there. It's actually cheaper to do that than ship it. Uh, you know, make packing crates and all. There's a lucky. There's a lucky person who's going to drive it. So I think it's going to be both uh, Brock and Jared. Oh, she's going to. So she's going to be packing up the table. So I think we're going to give her. We'll pack it all up. She's not going to come back. We'll pack it all up. I think we'll give her the tables because they're so custom for those spoons. 
what about the uh, sort of rights of the corn farm? The corn husk farm, so that's an interesting uh, item as well. The artist deliberately made that out of all organic material so that it can be recycled, basically put back into the earth. So that's the plan. It will be taken to a field and scattered out into a field uh, and returned to where it came. Uh, oh, that's so the lines that the lines. And everything will go back to the artist. So, so all of that, we um, contracted with the artist to make it with the contract and the conclusion they get so, I, I think that is such an outstanding exhibit to stay here. So it was, you know, uh, one of the things we have to work with yeah. is, you know, what every artist wants and also, you know, the cost. We did actually look into acquiring the um, there's the large their their um, artwork created by a woman named Sarah Sense, who is Native American, that wove together uh, Boulder County maps and sort of traditional Native American maps pattern. And we were kind of excited about the idea of acquiring that for the collection, but unfortunately, the cost is about hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, which is you know, our our acquisition budget is you know in the maybe high five digits if we really <laughs> figure it all out right. So, um, so that was the other thing. We just the artists uh, obviously they're making a living at this. They're hoping to you know resell those uh, works uh, somewhere. So that's dates and so forth are, are a little bit, uh, you know, we haven't yet nailed down exactly when construction is going to start and those things. So we are moving more to doing some in-house exhibits. We'll have more things available. So uh, the one that when we were starting to talk about, you know, what's what's been one of our most popular exhibits? And I was like, well, Lego. Lego was far and away the most popular exhibit we've ever done. It's been Close to 10 years since we last did the Lego exhibit, and we know if we bring that back and we can really uh, show to our children and family audience that uh, they can, they're welcome at the museum, they can come in and find an exhibit that's, that's super hands on, super connected, and then that's the opportunity when we have, and hey, you know, as soon as our Expansion is done. We'll have uh, hands-on children's family-oriented gallery all the time. So that's been you know, one of the things we've we've uh, noticed over the last few years. When we you know, sort of more intermittent with our children and family exhibits, is you know, that that audience has kind of uh, declined. And so we want to bring them back with with a big blockbuster, and then hopefully they will have a museum on their radar. So that one will be next summer, uh, open up in June, and run through early January of 2025. Um, we're talking about doing maybe like a, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we go down there, and you know, if there's a really cool piece that somebody's built that day, that we, you know, take that and set it in a case and say, <laughs> Bills of the week or something. Right. Yeah. We're, not, we're not touch. We're not touch.
any unfinished business or what have we? And then in terms of new business, I know we have fall board recruitment. Could you yes. So we need two volunteers um, to participate in interviews. We have only one vacancy, or we just spot is the only one that is open. Um, but we need two folks to do interviews by Zoom or Teams um, toward the end of October uh, or whatever happens to get for that position. Also, um, you know, we are definitely looking for uh, candidates for the board. You know, it would be wonderful to uh, see a diverse array of, of folks uh, applying for the, that slot. Um, we are hoping to have a, a variety of different perspectives, you know, younger folks, a variety of folks on the advisory boards representing the full span of our office. So if you have anybody that uh, you can think of, uh, I'm happy to talk with folks about what's, uh, what's involved in the process. We'll also talk to them uh, and let folks know about the deadlines as well. So October 13th is the deadline for this round of uh, recruitment. So we will two people to interview and then the appointments will probably happen in uh, November, December uh, for a term that runs through I 